Okay, now that you are moving to the thermal belt, some would say an invasion layer. Make sure that you have already clicked that like button, clicked that subscribe button. Why? Because of we have to push this video to more learners so we could get more distinctions. Okay. What is the thermal belt? In a simple definition, you will just say it is a zone of high temperature during the night time. What did I say? I said it is a zone whereby there are high temperatures during the night. Not just any night, usually winter season, guys. And it occurs on our very own valley. Why? Because of you're obviously learning about valley climate, right? So within my definition, I spoke somewhere uh, within the lines of night times or during the night, meaning it is associated with winds which blow during the night. Which winds are those? We know very much that they are catapatic winds, right? They are catapatic winds, the cold, heavy wind which blow down the valley during the night, right? This it is very much cold. And remember, during the day, there has been direct insulation by the sun on this very same valley area. Meaning the soil or the slope of this area has to be warm, right? So the slope of the area, it is warm. And as this cold, heavy air, it is descending towards this light, warm air, it will obviously force it to rise or it will uplift the warm air. The warm light air will be forced to rise, right? And then the cold air will take over what we call the bottom of the valley. There will be a cold air in the bottom of the valley. The warm air will be forced to rise. And remember, this is during the night. During the night, there is no sun, meaning there is nothing that is heating up the slope or heating up the air so that it could rise. So there is a dominance of cold air, which is descending. So there is obviously a lot of descending cold air, even in the middle of the valley, not only in the sides of the valley slope, but then also in the middle of our valley. So if there is a layer of cold air that is descending on the valley slope and there's a layer of cold air that is forcing the warm air to rise, it will not have any choice but to be trapped in between the two air masses, the two cold air masses. So there will be obviously a warm air here. The warm air will be now forced to be trapped in between the two layers of cold air, right? So there's obviously our warm air here. At the bottom, there's a layer of cold. On top, there's another layer of cold air, right? So this, it is actually our thermal belt. This is our very much thermal belt, guys. This is how it is usually created, and this is how it is actually created. All right, guys, so what do they mean when they say you can also call it an invasion layer. Remember, what is an invasion layer? An invasion layer simply means when the altitude increases, the temperature also increases. Remember, the bottom of the valley, it is now cold, but as you move towards the middle of the valley, it becomes warmer because of the warm air, it is trapped in the middle of the valley, the temperature increases. As the altitude increases, that is our definition for an invasion layer. Okay guys, so what are the disadvantages and the advantages of a thermal belt? All right guys, the advantages are that uh, in this area where there is obviously warm air, meaning during the night, it is not that freezing. People will obviously enjoy to occupy the land. People will want to occupy the middle of the valley because of it has much warmer night. Not as cold as where I'm actually staying. But then I do enjoy my weather, guys. It is not that cold. I do live in the bottom of the valley, but then it is not that bad. Simply means if there's a high demand of land in this area, that will definitely mean that 
the area value will increase because of a lot of people want to stay in the middle of the bay it is very much expensive to settle in or to farm in because of obviously it is much warmer it has its own advantages remember guys it is much the same whereby when you are in the southern hemisphere and you want to occupy a land that is not facing that is facing straight the insulation of the sun that land will be very much expensive not as expensive as where i stay because of where i stay that simply means um, it is very much cheap so if the land it is very much cheap where i stay that will definitely mean there will be a lot of industry you know they like to exploit those ones they like to find where they could uh, gain a lot of profit and stuff so there's obviously a lot of industries in the bottom of the valley there's a lot of industry remember this was the advantage because of people will have much warmer nights but then this is the disadvantage for people that are living in the bottom valley because of there's obviously that pollution coming from industries and what's worse about that pollution it is that during the night it cannot escape because of there's a layer of warm air in the middle of the slope so this obviously polluted air will continue and just circulate around the bottom veil people living here like myself will experience a lot of respiratory diseases <coughs> yes <sighs> pause like and subscribe if you really care about my health a lot of respiratory diseases such as tp i might be experiencing one myself so guys now you have got your mask but then that's not the only disadvantage for the people living on the bottom of the veil because of what happens is that as there's a lot of polluted air continuing to rise and mixes up with this warm air uh, there will be obvious clouds the formation of clouds and as there's a formation of clouds there will be precipitation in the bottom valley there will be precipitation not just any precipitation guys but then a cd rain yes the bottom of the valley will be affected with a cd grain. so yes it is much better to live actually in the middle or up, up sky because of here in the bottom of the valley uh, it seems like there are a lot of disadvantages and remember as there's this acid grain the crops the frost resistant crops which will be obviously planted at the bottom will be destroyed that that the, this rain it is not that good it can create a lot of sicknesses and a lot of diseases okay guys so this is how you got your marks i don't know what else is missing here and i don't think there's anything missing guys you have to just mesh that paper and make sure while you are smashing that paper you have already liked this video subscribe to my channel why because of that will obviously motivate me to keep on pushing and to keep on teaching okay now we are moving to our frost pocket a frost pocket obviously also okay on a valley slope yes it occurs on a valley slope but then what's its characteristic it is that at the bottom of the valley it has to be below freezing point what is below freezing point it simply means zero degrees ugea party going below so obviously our minus one degree and one degree it is obviously freezing point guys. and usually the temperatures reaches the freezing point mainly during the night meaning it is associated with catapultic winds the cold air which is descending down the valley slope so as this cold air it is descending down the valley slope and reach a level of freezing point yes it reached a level of freezing point that cold air will not only just be cold descending air but then it will turn to ice crystals so there will be ice crystals falling from that cold air into the bottom of the valley that is the frost pocket yes guys i am obviously affected by a frost pocket why because of i'm living at the bottom of the veil whenever i'm going to work during early mornings and i look at the grass it is very much white there are ice there's ice all over the place when you want to see frost pocket wake up early in the morning get the hell outside and then look at the vegetation you will see the frost pocket and obviously what you have to know is that 
if you are living at the bottom valley, like myself, you can't plant any vegetation. You have to plant frost resistant vegetation. What is the frost resistant vegetation? It is a vegetation that can survive during cold nights or during cold condition. And what is that vegetation? Vegetation such as uh, your, your spinach, your cabbage, do not be planting tomatoes, guys. The tomato will start to expand and inside the cells will burst and that will happen and you will be on some a lot of loss it doesn't matter whether you are a professional farmer you 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 want to take that net and close your tomatoes it doesn't matter what will happen is that tomato it is not frost resistant it is going to burst okay guys so now let's move to our last final valley climate which is called our radiation fog our radiation fog it is very much different than our frost pocket because of its very bottom has to be above freezing point if it is above freezing point that is me that means it is above zero degrees let's say plus two degrees right the bottom of the valley it is plus two degrees right and there's what we call those catabatic winds that descending cold air during the night and, and as it is descending and reach the bottom valley which is above freezing point what will happen there will be some visible droplets of guys water. remember if the temperature it is like this it simply means during the day there has been a lot of insulation the 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 the, 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 the land or the slope it is very much warm the cold air cannot cool off the whole area meaning the cold air it is not that cold so you have cool and clear skies so it is very much clear and cool when there is a radiation fog how do you see that because of the temperature it is above freezing point that simply means during the day there has been a lot of insulation here so the slope it is very so much because warm. of this slope has received a lot of insulation from the sun hence it doesn't want to move below freezing point that will simply mean that there will be some what we call terrestrial radiation there will be some heat coming from the ground or from the soil there will be what we call terrestrial radiation so as there is terrestrial radiation at the bottom of the valley and there's also descending of this cold air what will happen as they mix there will be what we call condensation there will be some condensation at the bottom of the valley the valley will be associated with clouds the the, the valley will be so much not so visible i will show you a picture the valley will not be so much visible for people like myself who are wearing glasses. So even if you are not wearing glasses, by the way, we are the same when there is a radiation fog. It doesn't matter. I will show you a picture of how it actually looks like. So guys, this is how you get your marks, guys. It is very much simple. The bottom of a radiational fog has to be above freezing point the bottom of a frost pocket has to be below freezing point they are both associated with catapatic winds and there you got your marks guys please and what are the advantages and the disadvantages obviously the disadvantages are a lot than the advantages because of it leads to poor visibility meaning people will find themselves on some accident uh, maybe during early mornings because of this is where it is associated and this is where you usually find the radiation for early mornings so yeah uh, there can be a lot of accidents and people getting injured and stuff guys. like that yes guys and when the day obviously continues and maybe the sun starts to rise again uh, the the condensation will disappear there will be a clear area for us to see. Okay, guys, now that I've given you your marks, you have to give me my like and my subscribe. Make sure that you have already clicked that like button, clicked that subscribe button. Why? Because of you definitely want to be here when I move to settlement geography. Okay.